We made it to the summit of Mount J. Isan Mountain, the tallest peak in Taiwan. Woo! Woo! We're Helen and Tim, full-time travelers with the goal to see the world one mountain at a time. In our next adventure, we head to Jade Mountain, Taiwan's tallest peak, sitting at over 12,967 feet. We're excited to bring you along on this hike. It's also the last hike in our Taiwan series before we head to our next country. So we are heading to Alisan National Park, which is Mount Jay, the tallest mountain in Taiwan. We just hopped on a high-speed rail train to from Zhuang to Jiayi. Then we're gonna hop on a bus, and after another bus, we're gonna hop on a second bus. So our total time to get to our final destination is about four and a half hours today. Quite a bit longer of a travel day, but it's totally going to be worth it once we get up into the mountains. So we finally made it to Moe's Burgers. <laughs> what would you get? Rice patty burger with pork. And I got a salad. Tastes like a strawberry puree tea. It's actually pretty good. I only got a seafood burger. Seafood burger. With rice. Yeah. <laughs> Could be really good. So we're trying to figure out if we can get tickets to Ali San or we can use our iPass card. So we'll just have to kind of ask around. We'll see what happens. Just looking at the bus route, trying to figure out which bus goes to Ali Shan. It looks like platform seven. So we're gonna go find the bus. Just a quick tip. So you do need one of these iCash cards to essentially board a lot of public transportation. You can actually get it refilled at the 7-Eleven anywhere around Taiwan. So just a pro tip, it's about 250 approximately NT one way to get to Ali Shan. If you get motion sickness, especially on a windy bus going up a mountain, take your Dramamine. I definitely was feeling crappy and thought I was gonna get a little nauseous. Luckily we stopped for a bathroom break and also I just decided to go to sleep because there was nothing else I could do. Being up high in a bus definitely adds to the curvy roads, right? kind of get thrown around more than in a, a private car. And that bus driver, I mean, he was definitely very skilled and he drove very fast up the windy roads. We just arrived to Ali San Transit Station and now we are going to get some lunch and hop on our next bus. Well, we made it to our last bus station finally, so no more windy roads. We've got to go check in at our hostel and then uh, walk over to the Mountaineering Center to pay for our mountain entry permit for tomorrow. It does not appear that the hostel is allowing people to go in right now. Our check-in time is until 3.30, so we're gonna go check out the visitor center to see if we can get our permit. We are currently up at 8,500 feet elevation, definitely feeling it. Doesn't really mix with the nausea from the bus, but I'm sure with this fresh air, it will definitely help. So we're here at the Mountaineering Center at Isan National Park, and we are essentially trying to check to see if we can start earlier. Apparently, if you are a foreigner, not a Taiwanese citizen, you have to start at 6.30 a.m. and check in with your passport. We are hoping to start before 5-ish tomorrow, and that's pretty much not gonna happen if they're not gonna let us in. So we're gonna find out if we can, but otherwise we do have to get a police mountain permit anyway. So make sure to stop by the lodge if you are not a Taiwanese citizen, just to double check all of your paperwork and permits. I'm just really glad that Helen speaks Mandarin because without that, we would be lost trying to like converse with uh, the people getting our permit situation all squared away. So thank you, Helen. Whoa. Fancy. I think that's where we start. 
that's like the west peak, the front peak. So we did find out that we actually don't have to wait until 6.30 to start tomorrow morning. We can start earlier because once we get up to the Payune Lodge, mm -hmm. uh, which is on the trail, um, we're able to scan our passports there rather than just having to check in down here at the trailhead. So we can start early, but the shuttle bus doesn't start until 6.30. So if we start earlier than that, we have to walk the road all the way up to the trailhead, which may add about 30 to 40 minutes. So there's potable water. Essentially, there's filling stations both at the Dongpu Lodge as well as the visitor center or the mountaineering center. And so if you have anything that you need to fill up, definitely do it before you hit the mountain. So this visitor center here actually has a lot of really helpful information about climbing in high elevations. And so basically it talks about the symptoms that you that you experience when um, with altitude sickness, but also it talks about with every 1000 meters of elevation that you climb, the amount of oxygen in the air actually decreases by 10%. And Mount Jade sits at 3,952 meters. So it's only like 61.6% of oxygen at the top of Mount Jade as compared to sea level. So this is where we have to keep our bags. We're not allowed to bring any of the bags into the bunkhouse. I'm confused. Oh, okay. We're at the top bunk. Are we? Oh, wait. Yeah. Where's 24 and 26? Oh, we're next. 24, 26 up top. It does seem more comfortable than the Alpine huts that we've been in before. They got a nice thick mattress pad, a duvet, pillow, everything you need. Hot showers are only from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we have to make sure we get in there before they turn the hot water off. Well, we're on our way to the visitor center. We're looking for some food. This is the only restaurant near the trailhead. And we believe they close in about an hour. I uh, suppose they, they stopped serving at like 4.30. All that's at the Dongpu Lodge where we're staying is ramen. So we may end up getting, depending on what the restaurant looks like. So we're just going for a walk. Without luck, we did not find any food at the Tataka Visitor Center. They were only serving appetizers, which didn't sound that great to us. But we do recommend buying food in the 7-Eleven from the Alisan Visitor Center if you have a chance. Getting our bags packed for tomorrow, making sure we got everything where it needs to be so that tomorrow morning we can start bright and early. It was disaster. <laughs> It's 3.45 in the morning. We are about to start our single day push, climbing the tallest mountain, Mount Jade, or Yisan in Taiwan. Good morning. <laughs> I know. It's, we're just after 4.30, and it should take us about 40 to 45 minutes to get up to the trailhead from the Dongpu Lodge. We'll see you in a bit. made it to the first trailhead sign. Still have 1.4 kilometers to go. At least it will be a good morning wake up for us. We're getting our first glimpse of the mountain peaks in this area. It looks like it's gonna be a super clear day. A storm system supposed to move in, but a little bit later on, our weather odds are gonna be good to summit the mountain this morning. Our first glimpse of Mount Jade is where we're going. Jade Mountain is located in Yishan National Park, one of nine national parks in Taiwan. We spent over 15 hours on the trail with a moving time of almost nine hours. It was definitely a slow go because there was a steady incline all the way the entire trail. It's about 5.30 this morning and we just made it to the Mount Jade Trailhead. It's going to be a great day. The weather looks perfect. Beautiful views on the way here. Helen and I always like to get an early start because we get the trail to ourselves. I got to say this trailhead is, it, it's like a temple. I mean, it looks like a grand entrance into the mountains. Yishan National Park is a subtropical alpine environment and covers over 250,000 acres. 
It was also interesting to learn that Yushan Mountain or Jade Mountain was created due to the collision of the Eurasian plate in the Philippine Sea Plate. So it looks like we've started the switchback portion. We're about, I would say, a kilometer-ish in. Maybe a little bit more than that. Gonna be straight up from here. <laughs> it's nice to have some straight terrain as well along the way, but switchbacks it is. I wish I had a coffee with me right now. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Somebody came unprepared. We'll definitely drop a link to the latest trail information to obtain a permit to hike Jade Mountain. And do keep in mind that Jade Mountain does require two separate permits, a permit to either day hike or stay overnight in the Payun Lodge, as well as you need to file a police mountain permit. It's more common for people to do the Jade Mountain hike across two days with an overnight stay in the Payun Lodge. The Mount Jade area is part of a protected, ecological site so therefore to reduce the impact of traffic they did implement permit season so definitely grab your permits well ahead of time because they will be gone very quickly yeah we were talking with a uh, local couple back at the lodge and they said that they've applied for this permit how many times eight times eight times <laughs> over the past two years and they finally just got their first their first permit so we definitely feel very lucky to to get it i think doing it as a day hike definitely helps and being a foreigner they designate specific permits just for foreigners so right we're in the last five kilometers to where we're in the last five kilometers to the pine lodge not to the summit not to the summit not yet with Jade Mountain being the tallest peak in Taiwan, standing at over 3,952 meters, it makes the island of Taiwan the fourth highest maximum elevation on any island in the entire world. Just came across this rock fall, pretty much split this tree down this trunk. Wow, the sheer power of these big boulders. And at the top of the hill, you got your alpine toilet. You want to try to use it? No. There's this really awesome viewing platform that was built at the 3.5 kilometer mark away from the Paiyun Lodge. This is great. Little uphill section. Whew. What does little, that even mean? A little drop off on this next section. I feel like I'm on a railroad track. Oh yeah, grab the chain. Oof, what's socked in up there now? 1K, yeah, yeah. We got this. We are just steps away from the Paiyun Lodge. We're just coming about 9.15, so we made some good time, just a little over three and a half hours. Officially made it up to the Paiyun Lodge. Quite a bit of people coming down from the mountain right now from staying overnight, as you can see, laughter of kids having fun. But we're gonna take a little break and we are going to take a rest, but the Paiyun Lodge can essentially house over 118 people. That's a lot of bodies, but we will just kind of browse around and we're gonna push for the summit. So the, we just got our check-in done at the lodge here and uh, we're just gonna take a little break. The guides are really nice, very helpful. The weather looks pretty good and we need to get something to eat because we're both really tired. And I believe it's only like two and a half more kilometers to the summit, but it's all up. helicopter pad apparently or no maybe it's up in the upper level i don't think this is safe enough but although no 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 you know what they don't land here they lower they lower a basket down i'm sure so that's probably what it's for you take time my hands are tingly because we're in the upper alpine the last time 
they felt like this was up in Peru when we went to stay at Refugio, Peru in the Laguna 69 hike. So if you haven't seen that, go watch it. It's a good video. One of the toughest hikes we've ever done, but yeah, definitely feeling, the, feeling that sensation in my fingers right now. Your blood oxygen is essentially working over time. Yeah. Your blood flow just isn't as good when you're in elevation. Yeah. About to go out of tree line. This heard a rock slide. Mini, mini rock slide. So if you're ever crossing scree fields, which are kind of these loose rocks that you see behind me, those rocks shift very easily. So there's uh, lots of rock slides that occur. If you're ever crossing those when you're climbing or hiking, try to move swiftly, swiftly through them. Don't stop and take any breaks while you're in the scree fields themselves. Not a smart choice. We have about, I don't know, 1.3 kilometers left or so to the summit. The trail continues to switch back up the side of the mountain all the way to the summit, so. Single day summits kinda always suck. We're on our last push to the summit. Pretty tiring. Feeling the elevation. Because the only way to get there faster is to not stop. But, you know, we take our rest when we need to. And we take it slow. You know, if you're doing a, a big alpine push with really steep ascents, you could always do like a rest step. So you could look that up, that really helps. You could do purslip breathing. So if you pretend like you're blowing out a candle, and you kind of go. That helps, that actually helps with your breathing. It keeps the uh, these sacs that are in your lungs open longer so that the oxygen can cross that blood, uh, that blood oxygen membrane. So anyways, there's a couple tactics out there that you can use whenever you're in high alpine. You could take Diamox. Diamox is altitude sickness medication. So why don't you tell them? <laughs> Getting my first massive cramp. Where is it at? Is that my quad? Yep. Sometimes you get cramps in your quads yeah. right? when you're hiking. Because lack of electrolytes. So we have her drinking some electrolytes right now and she's getting off the quad so that she can relax. <laughs> so, so that uh, the quad can relax because that's basically the only thing you can do is get some electrolytes in, take a rest break and then continue. What do you think? How do you like those? that advice? I've never had a cramp this bad before, so it kind of sucks. Oh, hey. So we're about to walk through a rock protection area. This is legitimately the last push of our summit bid. Doesn't look like the clouds are gonna clear up, which is kind of a big bummer, but I'm sure we'll pull some good B-roll from, from online. And yeah, just really tired. Every bit of me hurts right now. Mm -hmm. summit of Mount Jade. We've got the rock that was split in half by, light, by a lightning strike 360 of uh, clouds. This isn't too bad. This isn't too bad overall. It's tolerable. It's just like dissipated, it's like clear. <laughs> I've all of a sudden, blue skies emerged. 
praying to a higher being right now to give us some clear skies. <laughs> what can you do? You know, you, you gotta <laughs> climb mountains because you love climbing mountains. At least we got, to, we got to see it earlier. Ooh, we got to see it earlier. Oh, kind of. <laughs> All right, it's time to head back down. Bye. So we made it back to the trailhead in total. How long did it take us? Uh, oh man, it took us uh, 11 hours, right? Just under. Yeah, just under 11 hours. We did 4,600 square, 4,600 square, 4,600 4, feet of elevation gain. It's definitely yeah. a very long day today. And what, 14.75 miles. So I would definitely rate it a seven out of 10. You can't fault mother nature. There weren't actually any views for us today. Maybe I would have boosted it up a point. But if I compare it to Chilai Mountain, I would say this one was much easier. The difficulty of Chilai is much harder. Yeah. I mean, Chilai was, but yeah, they're different, but it was a good day. I mean, we, we got rained on on the way back. We had all four seasons, so we're gonna wrap things up, head back to the hut or lodge, whatever you call it, and we are going to head back home tomorrow. So thanks for joining us on our adventure. Make sure you like our video and drop us a comment. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks for joining us on our single day push of Mount Jade or Nissan Mountain. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more upcoming world travel adventures. We'll be heading to places like Nepal, Norway, Italy, and more. Next up is the country of Indonesia. We'll be heading to the beautiful island of Bali.